CPTSD pervades all areas of a sufferer's life. There are key cognitive, behavioral, physiological, and emotional signs of the disorder that patients and supporters alike can look out for. Dr. Romani walks through those symptoms in this session. Can someone develop CPTSD while the abuse is still occurring? So while the abuse is still occurring, absolutely, you're going to see very likely the um, many of the patterns you'd see in ongoing CPTSD, okay. that there'll be emotional numbing, that there'll be a, a fear and a confusion about close relationships. There'll be shifts in their self-perception, viewing themselves as bad, negative, damaged, and helpless. There also are shifts in their perception of the perpetrator. They sometimes view the perpetrator as all-powerful and all-knowing. There are times they'll have fantasies about revenge against the perpetrator. All of that can be happening in real time. What we, however, what you gotta keep in mind is, if the perpetration stops, those patterns don't stop. You know yes. what I'm saying? That the right. two, so yes, they absolutely can develop at the same time. And I must say, I've worked with clients who will share with me that while it was happening, their sense of valuation just kept deteriorating. A very common theme I'd hear, particularly in women and girls who were sexually abused as, as girls for years and years and years, it really impacted their sense of body image. They had a very distorted sense of themselves, of their bodies. As their bodies started sexualized more and more, they'd cover it up. Mm -hmm. They would develop eating disorders or distorted body image. So you'd see, all, again, all these plates sort of shifting developmentally because these are children being affected. Well, when it comes to spotting the signs, we break them up into a few categories. Mm -hmm. The cognitive, physiological, emotional, behavioral. Let's start with... Uh, cognitive. Uh, what are some yeah. of those warning okay. signs? So when we talk about any kind of a cognitive symptom or cognitive sign, it's an alteration in how a person is thinking and perceiving and even believing. Okay. So it's a, and when we look at a cognitive symptom, it's a, it's a problem or a uh, disorder in thinking. It's a distortion more often than not. So the kinds of cognitive distortions we can see in CPTSD are often about the self viewing themselves as bad, as damaged, sometimes even blaming themselves. That's, that's a, not an uncommon theme, that somehow they were complicit mm -hmm. in their own abuse. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe, well, I didn't try to run away, is one. They'll blame themselves for, you know, for something happening to them, again, them against their will. They'll view themselves as helpless and powerless. And they'll take that perception of powerlessness and helplessness into other areas of their lives and almost feel crushed when they can't, for example, in school or in a job, because that sense of helplessness, that sense of powerlessness tends to dog them in other areas. Mm -hmm. So these are incorrect perceptions. So when we see those and they're so distorted and they're so consistent, that's not an uncommon pattern at all in mm -hmm. CPTSD. Mm -hmm. What about uh, things like flashbacks and suicidal ideation? Those, that... absolutely. Those would definitely yeah. fall under the cognitive symptoms, not just of CPTSD, but also of PTSD. Right. So it's this re-experiencing. When a person experiences a trauma, one of the hardest things that happens for them is the re-experiencing. And if you talk to someone who's experienced trauma, what's so heartbreaking is things in their environment can set it off. It could be anything, a time of day, a so sound, the and they re-experience it. The re-experience, though, is them not actually experiencing it, but to them it is... Well, they're thinking about it. They're, th okay, they're, in they're it. thinking about they're it. They're in okay. it. They can't break out of it. They will... Um, in fact, people who are with them might even feel that in the moment they become mildly dissociated, yeah. like they're in that space and they're far away. Yes. Uh, uh, many, many, many clients over the years where we're doing the traumatic work and I start to lose them. I can see they're slipping and I'm like, come back in. I need you here because what I want to do, any of us who work in trauma is we don't want their thinking about the trauma to become so dissociated because then they're back in it. I want them in the room. You know, I'll, it's in fact, that we'll almost, I'll almost make noise. Like you're here, here, like it, right. we're talking yeah, about I'm this. I'm so getting this, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. right here we're talking about it. It's not happening right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's really keeping them in the room. It's okay, I'm here, you're safe. No one can come in, like, mm -hmm. but you're bring, keeping them in the room. But that re-experiencing, it's a mental re-experiencing, but some people will literally describe, like they feel like their body is in it again. They feel like they're being held back. And I'll even see that in their posture, like their back, like they're being held. Mm -hmm. You know, what was done to them was being done to them. And so it's, it's devastating. It's absolutely devastating. And, and this isn't a 
conscious choice. This no. is a, a subconscious way to cope. Right. It's, it's, I mean, trauma chops up the brain a bit, right? Chops you know, brain, it, yeah. it really, the brain is amazing in how it tries to protect itself, but there's more and more interesting work on how the brain isn't the only place that holds memory. Our bodies hold memory too. And a lot of this, you know, interesting work that's coming out on trauma is really understanding how our bodies hold this too. People feel this physically all over their body. And so we can't underestimate that. It's, it's very easy. I mean, listen, I'm all about the penthouse suite here, yeah, right. but it's all happening around the body. One pattern we do observe in CPTSD is disruptions in attention and concentration. That they, there will be times that it almost will feel at times almost dissociative that they just won't be present and a person with cptsd just won't be present and there will also be times when they themselves will acknowledge like could you say that again i just mm -hmm. wasn't i didn't get that mm -hmm. right and so we do know that trauma in all its forms disrupts attentional processes and the research the neuropsychological research on attentional performance and concentration in people who have endured trauma there's clearly disruptions there for sure and that can make life a lot more difficult. It makes school very difficult. It makes work difficult because you're not tracking as well. It can even make conversation difficult. Like I said, even in therapy, I'll have clients say, could you repeat that? And I can see what that is. It's sort of that frank attentional impairment they have. Now remember, attention, concentration, memory, these are all linked yes. uh, central nervous system processes. So it would make sense, but it can be frustrating. Because sometimes people think that they're almost being arrogant. Why don't you listen to me? You know, and again, it's, it's this almost as though there is this always this distracting pull that people with CPTSD will acknowledge experiencing. So I think that's an important part of the pattern to note because it can be misunderstood by some people. Some people might even see it as something like ADD or ADHD. Mm. It can look like that as well. But it is very frustrating for people who are experiencing CPTSD on top of the many other sort of oh, disruptive, of uncomfortable symptoms that they're experiencing. So how common is amnesia for someone who has CPTSD? Well, in, in stress disorders as a whole, and certainly in post-traumatic stress disorder, it's not unusual to see dissociative symptoms. And dissociation is when a person almost breaks away. It's as though they, they break away from their own reality or break away from themselves. It's, they're not almost, they're not present in the situation anymore. They've gone someplace else. Dissociation is known to be a mechanism that people who've experienced trauma manifest. And so in its most extreme manifestation, we see dissociative identity disorder, mm -hmm. where a person actually you know, breaks off into a separate and distinct personalities that dissociate from sort of the, the host personality. In the case of the kind of dissociation we see in, in post-traumatic stress, the person may dissociate when they're reminded of the trauma, and when they're talking about the trauma. And that's a pretty classical traumatic presentation. You can see some dissociative symptomatology, obviously in complex PTSD, this person has endured trauma and it's a, so they may dissociate in that moment and, ha and that becomes almost a, a regulation issue. So is amnesia just a form of dissociation? Then? Amnesia is a, is a blockage of memory, typically we'll see around trauma. So the person cannot recall events right around the trauma. Understood. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So amnesia yes. is almost a, it's, it's a memory function that gets disrupted at the time of trauma. Again, something we do see, there's actually something called dissociative amnesia that happens during the time of a trauma and the person just simply cannot recall it, which is actually quite horrible because sometimes people who've been through a trauma and can't accurately recall it, people doubt that they even experienced the trauma right. because they can't remember it, but they can't remember it because that's how what happens to the brain during trauma, yes. quite frankly. Yes. So um, that's, that's, a, that's a misnomer and a misunderstanding many, many people hold. So you can see that form of dissociative amnesia in people with PTSD. Here's the trick with complex PTSD. They've had repeated exposures to the trauma. Some they'll remember, some they won't. And some of that not remembering may be a byproduct of a dissociative amnestic episode. <music>